A typical race weekend is a practice one, a practice two, a qualifying, and then on race day you have a warm up and then a race. Qualifying at Road America is probably as important as anywhere. We have to put the car in the front, you know, we have to get the leg up. If we can make the car fast enough in qualifying, then we know it's going to be fast enough in the race. And then we've got two hours and 45 minutes to, to try to defend that. Qualifying, certainly one set of circumstances, make the lap time, make the car as fast as you can around that full lap. When it gets to race day though, we have to kind of account for how we're going to be able to defend a position or make up a position in a braking zone, which is the prime area that you pass at Road America. A lot of the time, our preparation you know, really starts in that second practice session, so you have to really kind of be thinking pretty far ahead. We'll stay down there, the crew will practice some pit stops, and we'll get ready for the qualifying session. Any changes that have to be made to the car, we'll be forced to make those on pit lane. We'll typically prepare the cars for qualifying a little bit different than like a practice or a race. Absolutely required to make sure that the car is at the minimum weight. So that could mean, in our case, we have spare batteries in the car. So we'll have two batteries during a race to make sure that the car always has enough power to start, especially when it's hot. Under qualifying, all it has to do is get started and go. So you know we'll reduce it to one battery, make sure the car is at the minimum weight that's allowed by the series. We'll give the driver enough fuel to get around to do the business he needs to, and that's it. We'll set the car up that way, and then you know we'll set it up for qualifying trim. So we're going to make sure that the car in qualifying is the fastest lap time possible. For the race, it might be trimmed out so that it has a little bit higher top speed so it's not as easy to pass or it's a little easier to pass a competitor. There is a little bit of thought we have to put into qualifying for the race because we are required to run on the same qualifying tires that we start the race on. We have three different tire compounds that we can choose from at a typical race, a soft, a medium, a hard. If we put all soft tires on the car to try to get one magic lap, you have to race on those tires. The chance of those tires living through a full fuel stint is not going to pay off in the race, so you got to be pretty smart there. And the driver has to be pretty smart too not to abuse those tires. We'll typically select the driver that's going to be the fastest that weekend. Some of our drivers are really great at some tracks and some of the other drivers are better at the other tracks. During qualifying, you're allowed to make changes to the car if you have that time, but typically they do split session qualifying, so you only have about 15 minutes to put in your qualifier. And there's, there's certainly a danger, let's say the, the track is drying or you're waiting for the track rubber to come in or you think the track for some reason is going to be its fastest at the end. There's a danger in waiting to put your qualifier laps in because heaven forbid somebody crashes and that session's red flag, the times are in. After qualifying then, it, the process kind of depends on how well you do. If you're on the pole or typically the first three positions, the car's impounded. So that means that the car has to proceed immediately from your pit lane. You're not allowed to touch anything. It has to go to the technical inspection area where they'll weigh the car, they'll put it up on a lift, they'll look underneath, they'll make sure everything is compliant about that car. It seems easy, but you see a lot of teams make that mistake where they're two millimeters too low and that's in a, in a technical inspection infraction and you get disqualified. It's hard to experience unless you're on that side of the pit wall, but there's definitely an energy throughout the pits. And when, when one of our guys puts it up at the top notch, I can't tell you what that does to the morale of the team. It, you know, you're just floating on cloud nine, and it, it gives you that confidence that, you know, yeah, the car is good enough, the car is capable. When you can hit that top spot, you know you've got something for the competition. Jonathan totally smoked him in qualifying and SRT just won its first factory Viper race since the year 2000. Getting it in the front was huge because every car you have to pass in this class is a huge challenge. So putting it out in front and keeping it out there is a tremendous advantage.